Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We are going to start the event. So my name is Keshav Kant. I am an inside sales team at Craven Protect. Before getting started, I would like to ensure some housekeeping to show you that you can interact with myself and the speaker. Firstly, if you have any uh, want to ask presenter a question, we have Q&A section and chat feature enabled. You can also click on the hand raise icon on the top of your screen to ask any questions. We will be also launching poll questions in today's webinar. We invite you all to participate for poll questions when they appear on your screen. We will be having Q&A sections at the end of the webinar to answer all your questions. Now I would like to thank, welcome Patrick and Srikant. We are so glad you could be here today to share your insights on RFID, data capture in warehousing, gaining the visibility that drives operational efficiency. We have Patrick Willett, Chief Growth Officer at Crave Infotech, having 20 plus years of industry experience. As a speaker, we have Srikam Crave Infotech. He's a digital transformation architect, experience in SAP digital code, enterprise asset management, enterprise mobility, and cloud platforms. He has 27 plus years of industry experience helping organizations in wide range of technology and technological changes for multiple lines of line of business. Now, without a further ado, I would hand over to Srikant to start the presentation. Over to you, Srikant. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. yes. I can hear you. Okay. okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, for the introduction, I appreciate. Thank you, everybody, joining this webinar. And uh, in next 20 minutes, uh, we will walk you through the uh, RFID en enablement for effective supply chain automation. RFID is a big, uh, not only a buzzword, but it's a reality now. Uh, next slide, uh, uh, Kesho. So RFID, I remember, uh, Kesho, next slide, please. 10 years back, I used to talk about RFID. And uh, um, most of the places when we try to do some kind of uh, assessment, it will fail at the price point. And the price point, point wasn't there. The technology was not mature, but it had changed a lot in the last couple of years. So today, now the agenda is we'll talk about transforming operations with smart data capture, portfolio and product for warehousing applications, how RF-enabled mobile application increase ROI up to 60%, next generation warehousing, and how Crave trans, uh, is transforming supply chain with the help of RFID capabilities and Zebra RFID capability and some interesting. Now, of course, um, I may, may not go exactly by the sequence, but this will cover into uh, next slide, Kesho, into uh, the next 15 minutes we have, 20 minutes. Uh, next slide. I think uh, you talked about that. Uh, so some of the challenges in the warehousing right now, and I don't have to repeat this, and you guys are testimony to it yourself if you are into the warehousing uh, process and the business. So there are a lot of redundant processes with time, uh, procedures with time, consuming labor tasks, right? It's taking more time. Inaccuracy and inefficiency in handling inventory, difficult to manage stocking and picking orders with diverse diverse product portfolio, high labor costs leading to increased bottleneck. And this has become more and more difficult through the pandemic. Today, we know that the logistics, um, the, the, the commodity prices, and also the consumer goods prices have gone up substantially because of the um, logistical challenges. Getting items on time, I was talking to one of my friend yesterday and uh, they had hotel operations and their uh, cooking store break the earliest cooking store available is five weeks nobody can afford that so there are a lot of things are going on and that's where rfid is playing a substantial role next slide please next slide so we're going to talk about trends and drivers so um unrelenting pressure for efficiency. Um, 
we are used to it now we want better and better uh, companies like I, i see two organizations who has created a huge disruption in last decade one is of course apple they got used us used to the smartphone and we want everything quick now we cannot wait for other people to respond when we send them a text we expect them to respond in few minutes otherwise we get restless that was not the time before smartphone and the second is what's going on with uh, amazon amazon is delivering goods in hour or two hours this is just unheard of sometimes we cannot go to the store and get the stuff in an hour but that's happening now with the delivery so there is a tremendous pressure for efficiency uh, near shore cross docking item visibility real time location automation there are so many of these uh, expectations we need to meet next slide and warehouse operation must keep pace with all these expectations uh, isolated systems and internal external visibility gaps labor shortage disconnected workers and workflow of course the, there has to be very clear connection between the warehouse the loading and the uh, field service or people who are out in the field all those needs to be very well stitched together bottlenecks and asset inventory blind spot rising workflow complexities error and compliance next slide please so let's talk about what are the trends in warehousing so customer expectations outside the warehouse demand more now so if you look at the uh, the digital transformation process most of the transformation first happen in uh, finance because you know ceo and everybody wanted to make sure they get the reports what they want then it came to the manufacturing then it came to the warehouse now it's out in the field so there is a lot of focus in that area for field service delivery proof of delivery uh, so pressure is increasing inside the warehouse to process more order volume is at an all time high we have seen that throughout the pandemic and uh, number of sqs have gone up a lot next slide continuing the trends uh, so what do we need to do to meet this uh, expectation we need to track better we need to have better visibility we need to have accuracy in the inventory we cannot afford to pick one item uh, and deliver um, something else than what was ordered that that is that accuracy has to be really good and and with without any proper tracking mechanism those level of accuracy achieving that accuracy is very difficult and that's where barcode qr code and rfid comes into picture next slide now what are the data capture solutions available in the field of course uh, it can be the first level is the tracking it can be barcode rfid or qr code uh, qr code can accommodate more then what is there in the barcode right it helps you to get more information and then you have rfid so active or passive so it depends upon the use case you can have passive rfid which helps you to track passively and then you have active rfid rfid which will tell you where the goods are so and that's where uh, uh, you need to look at very closely with the use case and what is the best use of the technology so the dcs is visibility capturing uh, data capture at the source is absolutely necessary next slide what are the customer cap- uh, goals for data capture fit to the application as i mentioned is it active is it passive is it short range is long range is it ruggedized semi ruggedized all that needs to be looked at cordless or uh, corded you might have specific reason why it needs to be corded um, lower cost of tsc uh, T- tco lower tco total cost of ownership we need to look at the lesser failure rate minimum processing time minimum power consumption you, you want to have a battery which will last there throughout the whole shift otherwise there is a loss of time 
uh, or you need to buy additional battery. So it has to be lower total cost of ownership, best in the class. Most advanced digital optical designs, highest resolution imaging quality, unmatched working range, right? All these factors are coming into picture to meet the customer needs. Next slide. Now, what are the products available? And that's where we work with Zebra very closely. Um, we are Zebra's premier partner and reseller too. And there are, uh, there are very few selected partners or resellers are RFID enablers. Uh, we have to go through a very specialized training and validation. And that's where Creo comes into picture. So we understand because RFID and location services are such that they need a good level of understanding and also validation and assessment, site assessment to make sure that it's going to work because it's a, it's a ready frequency dependent devices and there can be many interferences. Um, depends upon how your site is structured. So um, there are several things which are supported by uh, Zebra's RFID enabled products. Uh, of course, the performance, the history, the ruggedness of the devices, and the outcome. And uh, uh, intelligent tool that simply by every stage of the scanning, productivity tool simplifies integration, and of course, finally, the lower total cost of ownership. Next slide, please. These are some of the examples of the hardware you see on the top. Uh, those are the scan, that's a scanner, um, cordless scanner in the green color. And then the mobile device, which is, uh, uh, I think it's MC33R. Uh, and that's what is the RFID reader with a mobile screen. So you can have an application which is loaded on that. On the right, top corner unattended RFID. So one is attended, another is unattended. In unattended, you can have, uh, you can have um, antennas and those antennas can be placed. Those, those act basically as a reader. And then you have uh, um, the central hub where multiple readers can feed the data uh, and then that data can be aggregated to uh, in your application. So there is a attended and unattended applications, uh, hardware solutions are available as a part of this solution. And that's where all the assessment comes into picture, uh, depends upon what you are trying to do. So uh, some of the use cases, uh, I'll talk more as we go forward, but uh, let's go to the next screen, please. That's a good example. So this is uh, uh, portfolio by application, right? One on the left-hand top side is uh, backroom shipping and receiving. Second is, uh, dog door staging area now this is where you if your items are rfid enabled and you have readers on the dog door and at different places you know where the items moving you don't have to go and manually scan so it it's depends upon use case you can have manual scanner that is attended and you can have fixed scanners those will scan without any attendance and then you can get more efficiency for example we worked with a customer uh, they actually uh, assemble or manufacture the kitchen equipments and they have assembly line where it made sense to have fixed readers because that assembly line, the volume uh, or the frequency of equipment moving from one stage to another is relatively low. So there is a very little, little chance of interfering multiple barcodes or QR codes or RFIDs. Um, but there are, there are another use cases in the same organization is once all the assembling is done, it goes into the um, warehouse where there are so many uh, completed items needs to be shipped. And that's where mobile equipment or attended was necessary. So uh, we work with our customers and identify what's the best suitable based upon the location, the culture, the process, uh, what device and what form factor and what kind of combination is most important. On the right hand side, we have stock picking and then we have IT area. So all those kind of a different examples and uh, of use cases where the portfolio can be used. Next slide. It talks about the buy application. Uh, assembly line. I, I just explaining this about one of the customer about the assembly line. Operations area. Backroom shipping. 
and receiving and then the warehouse so every place will have different use cases uh, for different types next slide please now let's talk about so that's about the challenges the the uh, data capture uh, uh, devices and the sources available now let's talk about how we can put this into a real uh, use case so this is we call warehouse maturity model so when crave gets involved along with zebra and sap we do an assessment and identify where your organization is on this maturity curve so there are five phases of this maturity typically most of the organization in the phase two so first phase is of course uh, i don't expect most of the organization on a paper but they already have some sort of mobile application available for scanning so next comes the analyzing that data after that uh, uh, identifying and building intelligence around that and finally making it automated so those are the different phases and what we do next slide what we do is once when we talk to you we identify where your organization is and what tools and what methodology you need to follow so that you can mature through that uh, maturity curve this is just an example of uh, the application we um, one of our application for specific use case but it goes way beyond this right complete warehouse automation with rpa and automate uh, voice automation rfid qr code barcode and ar enablement smart device and, and app set up for mobile computing and finally we can also do the indoor routing and i have another slide which we should walk through next one next slide please This is one of the use cases where uh, this organization, uh, it's a global organization. They were able to achieve 43.9% uh, savings. Um, and this is the complete uh, um, validation, imaging, testing. This is how the application looks like. 19 countries, 37 lo 39 locations. Uh, and this is the hardware they have used. Uh, for this specific use case and they are already in production for over a year now next slide um can you get the whole slide please so uh, this is kind of an open clean slate right so uh, if you might have sap you might not have sap you might have different versions of sap uh, could you keep going Kesho? let's see if you can get yeah, very good very good yeah yeah let's go one by one so you might have different SAPs, right? Uh, if you don't have, that's fine. Um, RFID doesn't need SAP only. But then um, you would like to see, this is coming in a very different sequence. Keep go ahead and open up everything. Uh, let me see how it goes. Unfortunately, the sequence is not right. So uh, it can be barcode, right? Just stop there. It can be barcode, QR code. If that is, if you have any specific use cases, then you can do RFID. Of course, passive, active, uh, and if you need more integration and more automation, you can also do the forklift integration. Once you have that in place, you need mobile application, right? That's where the left top comes, and that's where we identify which mobile hardware is most suitable for you, for your use case, for that location, for the culture and the product, because you might have small size of products and they are onto the ground floor, it might be a good idea to have hands-free picking than an attended. Uh, if it is on the top of the shelves and you have shelves or four storage, it makes sense to have, and people have to use forklifts, it makes sense to have something which is mounted on the forklifts. So there are different use cases with an extended scanner. So that's where we get involved, talk to you, and make sure you have the right hardware because once hardware is a huge investment, sometimes it can be multiple times software investment and you got to make sure that is correct. In addition to that, we also do site surveys and I'll share this example. A large customer reached out to us saying, Shrikant, your, uh, sorry, the Zebra hardware doesn't work. Very generic comment. And we then, we sat down and we started understanding, we found out that their Wi-Fi network was too crowded. They themselves manufacture Wi-Fi routers and they thought, okay, let's put more routers. The problem was 
multiple routers were overlapping the Wi-Fi data. And when the user is in that overlapping zone, mobile will get confused, which network should I pick up? It was a simple problem that they overcrowded the network within their uh, warehouse and that was causing. So when we did the assessment, we do a survey and we told them where are the uh, spots and what they need to do and everything was right after that. So simple things can amount for, uh, account for the inefficiency within the processes. That's, then, uh, as I said, voice activated picking. Uh, if the items are small, they are on the lower end of the uh, spectrum, you can. Um, then uh, finally, uh, um, hands-free picking also we discussed. Yeah, keep going, Kesho. Let me see what else we have. Now this is this can be for uh, any processes, right? different processes, inbound, outbound, uh, um, or uh, cycle counting, uh, dispatching, barcode printing, QR code printing, uh, and uh, RFID um, programming or printing. All of that is available into the application. Now this is also another success story for a large global pharma and life sciences organization, where the challenge was to, uh, go back to the last slide, please. The challenge was to um, enable their spares. <clears throat> and there are regulations which forces them to track how many times the QR code or barcode is printed, and how many times um, the items were scanned, the, uh, and, and what's the inventory. And we help them to uh, make sure that those high volume um, low consumption items are effectively tracked and uh, uh, provided them the visibility using QR code and RFID both. Next slide. Now, how does this mix up with Libra and why we, right? So we basically bring together um, the ERP systems like SAP, hardware and the tracking solution organization like Zebra and our applications. So our applications are validated by Zebra. What does that mean? They are validated and, and, and tested for memory leak. They are tested for battery usage. They're tested for user interface. They're tested for integration with your backend. Not only that, it's there is a way for you to program the, the application so that these devices are used effectively. The application needs to um, read the cameras correctly the GPS correctly, the keyboard correctly, and also the scanning correctly. If that is not effectively programmed, the application will not work well. And that is what we have uh, acquired and perfected within our organization. Next slide. Now let's a little bit about Crave Infotech, right? This is our journey. We are a 13 year old company started in 2007. Uh, different partnerships at different level. And here we are in 2021. Um, next slide. Another <clears throat> big discussion is about buy versus build. Every organization can build, but it's always challenging for organization to acquire all these skill sets correctly and get right people with that experience and make sure the application is built correctly versus buy. So something what like working with companies like Crave, our applications meet anywhere from 60 to 90% of the requirement for any customer. They never meet 100%. And remaining 10 to 40%, we manage through configuration and customization. And that's where it helps you two ways. If you are from IT, you are comfortable that you are bringing something to the business which is already tested and meets at least 60%. And if you are business, you are comfortable, you are not going to spend too much time uh, testing it and perfecting it. So you have something to start. So it reduces the delivery time. And these are all the things we have mentioned. So there's always this now. And, and, and everybody wants quick results, right? Nobody has time to invest in a year to develop an application and see how that's going to go. Next slide, please. A little bit about Crave. Um, 15 years into the business. 
50 plus applications and of course warehouse and eam are core 50 plus customers 150 plus team size globally so that helps us to give you pretty much support at least 16 by 5 16 by 6 and uh, rest can be uh, upon request next slide With several partnerships we are also just go back to last one so we are a uh, diversity organization woman owned organization and um, went through uh, we've been pinnacle award finalists for sap that's a, uh, an award given by sap every year for very selected partners uh, and, and and some of these partnerships and relationships with different vendors next slide now let's talk a little bit about our broader approach so what do we specialize in we talked about the warehouse right that's the uh, second pillar here but we have very specialized skill sets into the asset management uh, supply chain supply chain includes proof of delivery truck loading truck latency last mile tracking venue mapping and of course bar of rfid and barcode everywhere also uh, intelligent enterprise so s4 sap cloud platform sap btp uh, ui ux uh, and custom application development next slide so there might be something which we cannot meet through our standard offerings and that's where what we have done is we have created reusable components those can be used to build any application for a specific need again you get the benefit of tested reusable components and that and the knowledge base uh, into this specific area to build the custom applications faster uh, a little bit about our services uh, of course we have a separate team which helps you to get resources uh, we always work jointly we build upon your strengths uh, btp enablement we have um, offering from starting from 2 weeks fury enablement mobile application development if you are already using smp smp is sap is mobile platform we can help you to transition to btp and we do end to end sap erp implementation ecc and p uh, s4 next slide this is a list of we call 50 plus prepackaged solution this is the list of those solutions um, on the left hand side starting from eam supply chain life sciences connected assets and iot order to cash uh, omni channel approvals management dashboard so you can see for almost every department within the organization we have prepackaged solution available next slide please so coming to the end so um, we talked about rfid right? so rfid is definitely changing the landscape everybody is thinking about it it's easy to install easy to use much lower price point than what it was but it's also gives you a lot of flexibility to provide that visibility so iot is also another big buzzword but iot is only successful if you can if you can replace your devices your sensors and that's a much bigger task but the rfid can give you that one step closer uh, by monitoring different uh, points without disrupting your production process and what you have right now so uh, we should open up for q and a if you have any use cases in rfid enablement in asset management warehouse or supply chain we'll be happy to talk to you uh, we do uh, uh, assessments which are complementary and helping you to understand the technology helping you to understand the offerings and then it's up to you to decide how to move forward yes sure back to you thank you sukan thank you for your insights on this uh, we have started the poll questions uh, we would like to you to participate in it and uh, also open the q and a sections uh, we have one question from selvia frank uh are you going to okay. share the slides yes hello yeah hello am audible yes yeah we can yeah. hear you yeah sure we can share the slides yeah so there is one questions only mm -hmm. okay Yeah. that's good so again uh, we do free assessment 
we work with zebra closely if we have to involve zebra we can do that and uh, help you to see where the rfid is might be helpful and most suitable within your uh, processes and your process challenges to resolve your process challenges you can reach out to us i think these are the contact details yeah uh, you can reach out to us um, on this email also there is another common email contact at cravenfitech.com can you type that email keshav into the chat so that they have so yeah. feel free to send us an email uh, and and we can talk through Okay, excellent. Let's give yeah. few minutes back to everybody, and have a nice day. Thank you for joining. Ah, uh, I do. We do have one question from Stephen okay. Wells. Um, uh, the question is: What temperature range can RFID text be used in? Some of our products come off the production line at five hundred to six hundred degrees Celsius, and we need or need to use RFID on those. Excellent question. uh there are now new generation rfid tags available which will last much higher temperature we'll have to check specific use case stefan uh if you would like to share uh, your contact details and and we can set up separate time and understand what your use case is uh, but yes there are rfid tags available now which last uh, for much higher temperature harsh environment um yes we we did a use case with an organization who does the um cloth washing of course they have to some of those industrial clothes uh, needs to be put through much higher temperature and higher pressure and also spinning environment and they were able to last so let's have a separate conversation if needed thank you for sharing your email hello everyone uh just on the update once again uh, we do have the poll question on we will be ending in in few more minutes and wait for you to participate in it do uh hi shikant uh i think we don't have any questions anyone do have any questions uh, i will allow them to uh, speak they can raise their hands look i think we're uh, i think we're good okay great let's uh, thank you <laughs> yep go ahead sorry yep thank you everyone for joining for today's webinar uh, we will be sharing you the webinar recording and if you do have any uh, uh question or any challenges uh you can reach out to us on contact at craveinfotech.com we will be happy to meet you uh separately thank you everyone thank you for joining the today's webinar bye now have a good day bye 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 bye